Good afternoon Code Simplifiers tribes. Behzad is here with another simplified video for beginner programmers. As you are aware, I created another video series on learning Python for beginners. And in today's video, we are going to go through fixing an error. To resolve this problem, we need to take three steps. Step one is we have to identify what is a problem. The second step, it will be what it caused a problem. And the third step we need to take is how to resolve the problem. Without any further talk, let's get into it. Let's say you are in your PyCharm environment and you wrote a simple code as simple as printing hello world. And to be able to run this program or this line of code, you have to execute it. And as you see here on top right corner, the play button or running button is disabled. That means there is no way to run in this code. So what it causes it? So as you are aware, the, Py the PyCharm is independent platform and the PyCharm uses the Python code, translate them and give you an outcome. But here to be able to read this code, you need to adding a configuration or adding an interpreter to interpret your codes and give you an execution. So doing that, so you need to come to add new. Sorry, I'll just show you one more time. Here you see add configuration on top right corner. Click on add configuration. Here on left tab, you see add new, click on add new and choose Python. Then here you don't have to select a name for it. And if you click OK, then you see the play button is able. But if you click on it, the program doesn't run. Alternatively, if you are able or you're successful to run your program, you're highlightly getting this error. Which so what is the problem? The problem is you don't have an interpreter to run the codes on PyCharm or you get an error when you're running the created interpreter. So which is in our case, that's why we created an interpreter, but when we are playing, still the code doesn't run. So what it caused the issue? First, I will give you an explanation of the technical terms of what it caused the issue. Then I will give you a real life example, which you will understand what it caused the problem. It will be easier for you to later on, if you're facing the similar issue, you are able to fix it. So. The first reason is there is no virtual environment. And the second reason is the Python interpreter cannot find the file and the project folder. So I explained to you the technical way. Now we're giving it to you a simple way. So let's say, imagine you are going to telling your friends, let's go to a library to read a book. If the library doesn't exist, so your friend will turn around and telling you, there is no library, where should we go? And that is will be for virtual environment. Basically, you are looking for an environment or an, a library, which the library doesn't exist. That's why the, you will get an error. And the second one is, let's say, okay, you find the library and you're going to the library and you are telling to your friends, go and read a book without specifically tell him where he can find the book and what is the name of the book. So in our example, the file will be the book and the project folder will be the shelves or the rows inside the library to find the book to read. Our third step will be how to resolve the error. So to resolve this issue, we have to take a few steps. The first one is we need to check on our system if we have the Python installed on our system. Then if we do so, we have to move on to the next step, which it will be creating a virtual environment for our project. And the last step will be specify the Python files, which file do we want to read. So now we understand the problem, what it causes it, and what is the solution. So let's bring our knowledge into practical way, which we can see the result. The first step was to check if we have Python installed on our system. If you are a Windows user, you come to your start section inside here, you see here, just write down CMD, which will stand for command prompt, click enter. So this uh, black window pops up, what we have to do is we have to check uh, the Python installed on our system. So we're just typing Python, as I see here, just click and enter. If you have Python installed on your system, it comes up here and it gives you the version. And if here nothing pops up, that means you don't have Python installed on our system. So you need to basically download Python onto your system. So doing that, so just come do a simple Google search just write down Python download. It takes you to www.python.org. So one thing you have to keep in mind is 
make sure you're downloading Python from the original uh, the website. So do not download Python from any third party resources. Here you will say download Python 3.9. This is the latest version. You can download it. And the only reason I tell you to not download Python from any third party is just because of the security reason. So you don't put yourself on any risk. So we downloaded the Python on our system. Now we are going to create a virtual environment or a library for our project. And you need to just go to the project folder is where you created your PyCharm or Python code. So in, in other simple word is just go to the location of the project folder. So for mine, I just put it here as a folder name project fixing. It is very critical you remember where you're saving your folders and the files because later on in the last step we need to specifically tell the machine where is the folder and where is the file that we are going to read. So here you just create a folder, an empty folder and name it virtual environment. So once you created your empty folder, let's come to your PyCharm environment and first step is delete the environment or interpreter we created right now. Just click on delete, click OK. Then come onto file on top right corner. Here, just click on file. Just go to settings. It will open up a project for you. Then go to your project. Here it says Python interpreter. Just double click. Here we are going specifically to tell the machine to create our virtual environment on this section. Just drop down the project. Click on show all. And here we'll open up another window for you. Just click on the plus button. And here is where we are specifically telling the machine where, is, where we want our virtual environment to be built on. Here is where we created the folder here from our last step. This is the location we are going to tell the machine to create a virtual environment. So once we specifically tell it, just click on new environment, click on that folder. And here it tells you where to go. So here you tell the machine where is the folder you want to create it. And now where is my folder? Virtual environment, click OK, click OK. Based on your system specification, creating or building a virtual environment, it could take up to a few minutes. So if it takes longer than usual, do not worry, that is a normal process. So once the virtual environment created, you have to select it, click OK, then apply, then OK. So basically we built an, uh, built an environment for our project to read on or we created a library. Now it's time to tell the machine where is the book, which shelves, what is the name of the book and how to pick it up. So next step will be add a configuration for our project. Click on add configuration. Here we just click on add new, selecting Python. Here is a script path is where we have to select our project file. So click on the folder. Then you have to go through your projects or wherever you saved your folder then you can select it so i chose the project file click ok then here will specifically working directory is where it picks up the project folder so once you pick up the square path or the project file it will automatically pick up the working directory if for any reason it doesn't it will be a similar thing you just click on the folder just go to the project folder and pick it up by yourself. But 99.9% .9 of the time, it will pick it up by itself. Once it's everything ready, click apply and OK. So now it's time for running the code to see everything's working fine. Just click on the play button. And here you see the code executed and a hello world showed. To make sure everything working fine, I just want to change the text in a string. So it will be hello user. How are you? Then running the code. And you see here, hello user, how are you? So the code executed successfully. So that's it for this video. I hope it helped you and you learned something from it. A few things or recapping what we've done. Basically, we found what it caused a problem, why we do not have a virtual environment for our project. Then we understand what it caused it, why it caused that problem and what is the issue. And the second, uh, third step or last step was to going through a few process, simple process to fixing the problem. And one thing you have to make sure you remember is always make sure the virtual environment 
and the project are in one place and you know where they are because if you don't it will make a confusion and will make your job harder so it will be better to always create a virtual environment and a project fold or folder or file in one location if any section of this video wasn't clear to you or you didn't understand what we've done please make sure you write down your opinion or your question inside the comment section below of this video and i will make sure i'll respond to it as quick as i can other than that thank you for your time and watching and if you are new to this channel please make sure you subscribe to the channel put the notification bells on to make sure you're not missing any of the weekly videos thank you very much for your timing and i will i will see you all later next week